Much love. Dusty Vision is in the house. Much love. Tonight on Dusty Vision Radio, we're showing love to Mellow Man Ace, most famously known for his song Mentirosa. He is a rap pioneer. He is someone who paved the way for Latino artists in hip hop. And I'm glad that he's still doing his thing, still traveling all over the country, rocking shows and wrecking mics. I got the chance to check out Mellow Man Ace this past week in the city of Pico Rivera, an area in Los Angeles County. He rocked it. Great show, great vibes, and great people. Shout out to the city of Pico Rivera. Tonight we're doing something different on Dusty Vision Radio. Tonight we're going to vibe out to Mellow Man Ace's live performance that I had a chance to check out. And I'm also going to include clips from our interview from a few years ago when I pulled up to Cypress Ave where the legendary Mellow Man Ace grew up. So kick up your feet and let's show some love to Mellow Man Ace. Dusty Vision Radio. All right, we are in the city of Pico Rivera. Me and my lady about to check out a show. My boy Mellow Man Ace is performing tonight. At the end of the summer street fair, right across the street. It's cracking, a lot of people. Came here last year, it was pretty dope, so we decided to come check it out, especially since the homie Mellow Man Ace is doing his thing. Here at the city of Pico Rivera Summer Street Fest, the last one of the season, baby. Make some noise for Kito Soul. Make some noise for Oso Mami. And coming to the stage, none other than Mellow Man Ace! Make some noise, make some noise! Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Make some noise, Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Oh, snap, they don't let the rappers in here tonight. Yeah! They let the rappers in. Let's go, Mellow. You know Southgate is in the house. Yes, sir. You know Pico Rivera is in the house. Mellow Man Ace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I'm right here with Mellow Man Ace, legendary hip hop artist. What's up, man? Chilling, chilling, man. Out here on the Ave on a nice, beautiful Saturday. Yes, you know, sir. Cypress Hill, Cypress Ave. This is it, man. This is where it all started. This is where it all started at. Right so I kind of, I kind of want to go way, way, way back before we, we even jump into the hip hop shit. Um, I know you left at an early age, but what, uh, what did your parents or your your relatives tell you about what it was like growing up in Cuba? Oh man, yeah, we left in 1971, and you know the stories we heard here were, you know, food rationing lines and stuff like that, where. You had you you got like 20 pounds of rice for the month for your whole family, but you had to go stand in a long line. You know what I mean to get that. You had 20 pounds of rice, 20 pounds of coffee, 20 pounds of uh, I think beans and sugar, um, and that was kind of all it was. And then if your uncles or your pops found, you know, they got a pig somewhere, then that day you you had some meat. You know, they put the the whole pig up, slowly cook it. You know, it take a long time to cook a pig. She was crazy, man. Yeah. Um, very humble, very humble be beginnings. You know what I mean? Damn. But uh, living under communism and shit like that, it's never easy. You know, I remember seeing Soviet tanks on my block as a young man. Mm. Um, it's, 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 it's sad at that time it was really sad you didn't really know what it was when you four or five years old but you know you come to the United States and the worst you see is, is like a police car on your street which is I guess kind of the equivalent but not so crazy you know um, but that's what it was man Baby, I love y'all <laughs> love too been doing this for a long time and I want to thank all Mexican people, above all, for the love and support for 33 years. Right now, I want to say happy birthday to hip hop, 50 years of hip hop. And I also want to thank Bruce Soto Events for bringing me out here and putting me on in this great card. How many people were born in 1987? Mm. Can y'all hear me in the back? ¿Cuántos han nacido antes del año 87? ¿Se oye? In 1987, I wrote the very first all Spanish rap record in hip hop history. And it sounded like this. We're gonna do it over some Wu-Tang stuff right now. And hey, check it out. What was it like uh, growing up in LA, being Cuban? Did you get a lot of shit from, you know, the Mexicans, El Salvadorians? Because it's not too many Cubans out here in LA. It's late, at least back then, right? No, no, no. Actually, it was a lot of Cubans at that time. Um, it was a, a big Cuban um, community, Southgate, Bell, mm -hmm. even in the Huntington Park. Okay. And um, and even up in parts of Cudahy, you know, it was a big Cuban community. And so we, we had our pocket of, of Cuban things to do. However, you know, we did get um, static. You know, we, we had to box a lot, you know predominantly with the Mexican cats and, and some of the brothers too because the Mexicans didn't understand how we could be black and, and speak perfect Spanish and the brothers hated the fact we spoke Spanish but was black 
So, <laughs> we didn't know English at that time. You know, I was just a young cat trying to figure it out, talking like a very broken Sammy Sosa type of English, you know, like baseball's been very, very good to me type of thing, you know? Uh, shit like that, man. It was, it was arguments over dumb shit, you know what I mean? Like cultural differences and things like that that nowadays we look at in our older age and, and we're looking back and we go like, wow, how ignorant was society back then? To my brother's group called Cypress Hill. Yes, and when I get with Cypress Hill, here's how it sound like, like this. It's all about good music. Yes, sir. Quito Soul is good music. Yeah. Also, Motley is good music. Bellow yeah. yeah. Man Ace is pretty good music. Yeah. So you mentioned that you, Cypress Hill, and you guys, you guys all kind of, you know, came up together. What? Who made the decision, or how did the decision come along for you to come out first, you know, and them to come out second? That shit all happened by chance. You know, we were all together. Um, I had started a group called Devastating Vocal Excellence, uh, DVX for short, and and that's where Cypress Hill spawns from, right? Because we was all together as DVX, and then um, at the same time we was we had just left our breakdance crew. Me and I went and got Be Real out of there. Because I saw the breakdance crew was really more concerned with just hitting skins after, like, a battle or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I had already seen Wild Style and Crush Groove and Beat Street. These movies showed us that we could be more, you know, and I, I, I felt that I wanted to be more than just that. My brother Kid Frost, when we got together back in the day, we did this one right here. Load for the OGs. Let's go. Right here, So when it was all said and done, um, how big of a hit was Mentirosa? How, how many how many records did it sell? Billboard charts? What are we talking? And we billboarded over two million, and then you know when you count all them bootlegs and motherfuckers duplicating the cassette tape yeah. and all that type of stuff, man. Who knows? Man? Yeah, yeah. You really never really get a full. You know, you get what you get on your on your on your royalty check, but you know it's not a true sense. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's the subleases of that of that particular body of work that that also have sold on other compilations and stuff like that. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I really couldn't give you a definitive mm -hmm. on that. All I know is I grew up in this area also, and everybody had the tape. And sadly, 
eight out of ten people it was on it was copied it was from something else right, it wasn't right. even the original so there's we're yeah. probably talking tens of millions of, of just tapes out there with your voice on it I don't it. know you know the, 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 the music industry gave me credit for two million uh huh so yeah we'll take that <laughs> Of Latino rappers, do you remember you know some of the ones coming up back then? There, nah. there were no Latino rappers except for the part that, like I said, I mm-hmm. heard this one cat, Mr. Schick, of the Mean Machine, and I would have to go and, and research that and find that, find his name out and who he was in order to you know really get him fully engulfed in, in, in into the like the whole Latino aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And then I came to find out that there was Puerto Rican cats, you know, that. They weren't necessarily yelling that they were Puerto Rican on the records, but they were there at Hip Hop's inception. You know, people like Prince Whipple Whip, my man DJ Disco Wiz, Charlie Chase, Ruby D, people like that, you know, um, that influenced early hip hop culture, you know. Um, so, but again, there was nobody really rhyming that I heard on Wax except Mr. Schick. And, and that's what really guided me to want to be rhyming in all Spanish. And then later on, I would I would add on to that by creating the bilingual rhyme style that I created. Yeah. Who who was the first Latino artist that you remember blowing up or, or being, you know, huge? In hip hop? Yeah, yeah. Me. <laughs> there me. Is. There it is. Real talk. Um, yeah. It was none of us out here. It was none of us out here. Um, it, it was a it was a wasteland, you know what I mean. All you really had was like the the, the black MCs blowing up at that time, and now we're talking about you know the remainder of the '80s, '82, '83, '84, '85, '86, '87, '88, mm-hmm. stuff like that. It was oh there was Prince Marky D, but mm. the Fat Boys, I believe he was Puerto Rican. But he wasn't pushing it like you said, but he right? Wasn't pushing yeah. the line like yeah. that. Yo. It's all about good music. Yeah. Somebody say good music. Good music. All the way in the back, good music. Good music. Good music. My man DJ Soul Life in the house, Kid Frost DJ right there. Woo! Sitting there with the wife. Much love. 
A lot of people I know in here, K. Poop, much love. Dusty Vision is in the house, much love. My man Joey in the house and his whiz, much love. Much love to my homeboy, Victor Valiente in the house, much love. Check this out, man. One day I was sitting at my mom's house and I was trying to write a song about this female, right? Yep, yep, yep. And nothing was coming out. So I drank a 40, you know, twisted something, you know. Took a leak, yasso. Then I came back. The next thing that happened was I made history like this. Um, tell us about what was going on with, with Melamanace just before that hit and, and just kind of how it all came along. Word, yeah. Um, I remember um, I was I had just gotten picked up from Delicious Vinyl Records where we dropped the Moss Pingon Records. You can see I'm rocking yep, yep. a shirt. Um, and then we put out the um, we put out the Rhyme Fighter single, and it moved some units, and it got a good cult following. That's the one we're on the horse, right? Right. Yeah. And then the label didn't like the fact that they pumped so much money on it, and didn't yield the return. And it's a, it's a trip when you get to where creativity meets corporate interest, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But they didn't yield the return, so they was like, "Look, Mello, we're gonna put out one more single." And if this shit don't hit, we're going to have to drop you mm. and shit like that. Luckily, you know, I think it was in the sun, moon and stars that for Latino people that somebody was going to break that ground and it was going to be this record, Mentirosa. And then we put it out on Power 106. They put it on the make it or break it type mm, of thing. Yeah. And in its first week, it beat Janet Jackson, Madonna, the new kids on the block. And a bunch of people like that. And that's kind of when we knew that we had something special on our hands. Because Latinos as a, as a community stood up and got behind the record. And they went out and they bought it. They requested the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, they went out and purchased it. And then next thing you know, the phone started ringing for concerts and, and shows and stuff like that. And, and what, I got to give props to my man Paul Rodriguez, the comedian. He was one of the first... TV shows that put me on the show. Oh, okay. And that's really when shit really started to pop off. Nice, nice. Who did the beat? That fucking Santana sample is just classic. Who did yeah, that? Yeah, uh, that was uh, Tony G. Tony G, Tony okay. G, yeah, who legendary. Produced La Raza for Kid Frost as well. Okay. Yeah, so Tony G, the mix master for K Day, he, also, he, was not, he was a drummer, a percussionist, and a music producer. So he put it together and he was like, look, don't. The, the most important part about that whole thing was when he said to me, don't come back to the studio until this record is bilingual. It was his idea. Mm. It wasn't my idea. And then <coughs> the way I created that style was, see, we lived right here. And as you can see, the houses are only divided by a driveway. Well, there was a little kid in that house because our bathroom was back in the back their kitchen matched up with our bathroom and he said I could hear him as I, I was sitting out here out front with Be Real trying to write the song but nothing was coming we was having 40s and blunts and shit like that and I said I gotta use the bathroom right so I go in there and then I heard the little kid he said to his mom Ama, I'm going to the liquor store Orita Vengo I'll never forget it verbatim that's what he said and then my kind of like my Einstein light went on, mm. and I was like, "Holy shit, that's the style right there." Spanglish, basically. Spanglish. Yeah. If I could do one line in Spanish, one line in English, and then repeat the process, put the rhyming word on the appropriate language, I got the style. Mm. So when I got back to the car, Be Real had wrote the "Check This Out, Baby" part, and then I just the water valve opened up mm. a flow and just. Tenemos tremendo lío. Last night you didn't go a la casa de tu tío. That all that whole shit just spewed out. Yeah, and and that's how the style was created. Yeah. Yes, sir.
spending my dinero.
and Ace Rocket, Pico Rivera. Had a great time. Oh, I'm sorry, doggy. I just stepped on a dog. Sorry, little guy. Bella and Ace just killed it. Old school hip hop rocks, yo. Let's go. Look at this crowd. Festival shit. Come on, Pico. Happy to get not for you anyway. This is for Oh, it's crazy. Back, yo. Sheesh. All right, so I lost my lighter. And I want to take a few puffs of my J, so we have to hit up the gas station across the street. Shout out to Pico. Need a lighter. Oh, you take your time, take your time. Look what just caught my eye. Hey, may I have a, uh, a lighter, please? A bit? Doesn't matter which one. Pick what you, what's your favorite color? Light blue it is. Thank you. Oh, it actually matches my hat. That's why you did it. I have 19 cents. Do you want them? She has, she has 19 cents. She wants to get rid of her change. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, Fifteen. No, no, no. I oh, have to have it here. Gotta look white. How much are these? How much are these? No, it's nineteen cents. Yes. See. How much are these? Hold on. Uh, I have to do a price check. Where'd you get your shirt, bud? Oh, I got it from the concert. Oh, they have given away. Oh, really? Okay, I gotta get one. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye, bye. Thank you. Uh, everybody's talking about that prime, dude. That's funny. All right. Got my lighter. Back to the concert. All right, after a good show, let's go check out some of the vendors here at the Pico Rivera Summer Soul Fest. I like the name of that. It has a nice pop to it. Pico Rivera Summer Soul Fest. So we got some tamales here. Nice. Look at that. Check out. I already lost my lady. She's over there. Looking at all the furry pink shit. Hawaii shaved ice. Pupusas. I just had some bomb tacos, the govern governador tacos. It's uh, shrimp, melted cheese, onion, and I think bell peppers. Oh, they're so good. Oh, look at that elote right there. This is definitely an LA thing. If you're from out of town, you probably don't know about elote, the corn, the street corn. Oh, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, check out the vibe, man. Everybody's good. This is uh, beautiful tonight. Gang of motherfuckers are going to get COVID, but it's beautiful tonight. It's beautiful. Do they, baby? You want it? I want it in black. You always want it in black. You know. 97.9 La Raza. La Musica. Yeah, hello. It's dead at their booth, just like radio's dead. Mega 96.3. Oh, damn. Wait, which one are... Oh, wait. No, they're Mega 96 and 97.9. No, now. I know, right? Yeah, one job. It's like a swap meet here. I like this. Is there a Ninja Turtle one? No, is there a Ninja Turtle one? No, a Ninja Turtle hat. Sorry, that's what I meant. For Luca. No. No. Oh well, my nephew likes Ninja Turtles. I was gonna see if they had a Ninja Turtle hat for him. These things were probably made in China and probably are full of fentanyl, but it's all good. Can I show you the bracelet? Yeah, show me. Beautiful. They don't have it in black. Get it, baby. I think that's your excuse for not getting it. I don't like white. It doesn't match for them. Oh, okay. 
Well. Of course, Tigger's black. All natural handcrafted CBD. Love it, love it. Look at that. Beautiful. Very cool. Very cool. See, so start here, and one day maybe your jewelry will be in Walmart. I like that. That's kind of cool. Nice. Oh, these are kind of. Oh, these are funny. Chalino uh, Sanchez. Oh, these are good. I like that. Birthday pool. Oh man, you are appreciated. Oh, we did your whole That's pretty funny. I lost my woman again. Collaborative asked me about Medicare. Yeah. I think Nike would have a thing or two to say about that. <laughs> Love it. Hey, if you put a little, uh, if, you, if you put a little Hello Kitty on the eye, it's not infringing. Hey, baby, you want a Nike sweater? Only sure? if it has Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you, it's not Nike. They put a twenty-five dollars. Please read this to me. Palm reading five dollars. I get a hammer. Uh, five thousand hand reading. Palm reading five dollars. People still believe this shit. There's their fool. I mean, it, is it? It's like a novelty, right? Like people don't really, really believe that, do they? They do, really. Sensi Independent Consultant. I like that. So Motley just hit the stage. Oh, so Motley. Oh, Life Behind Bars, they're a, they're a motorcycle. Got it, got it. Like that, okay. All day dodges, baby. R.I.P. Kobe. Knock off jerseys that'll probably melt if you put them in the dryer or freeze uh, wash machine. Yeah, hold on one second. I think your brother would like one like this. Do you have another one like this one? Uh, no, I think that's the last one. That's the last one. Similar. Similar? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, let me see this one. Yeah, they usually send us different colors. Not every time they, do, they send okay. us the same. Make sure that one, it looks yeah. nice too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get these two right here. These two? The black sure. ones? Let me, let me see if I have a shake. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, I do. What about that one for your brother? I like really a I don't have change. Okay. You do not? You do? Yes. Okay. These two? These two, please. Like 75, right? That's 60. 
Very good night tonight. Beautiful night in Pico Rivera. Definitely enjoyed myself, gotta say. Shout out to Pico Rivera. You gotta do more shit like this, man. Pico is a good city. It's a nice city. You know, it gets a bad rap, but tonight was a good look.